I mean, if you're doing a bunch of experiments on poop, right? You got two options. Either collect a bunch of poop from people, right? So you just have to like, every time somebody poops, you collect their poop and you do a test on it. Or you create like a poop simulant, right? Yeah, so t so tell me a little bit more about... Who is Josiah Zayner? Who is Josiah Zayner? Who are you? All really? access, Esther <laughs> Kim, Josiah Zayner. <laughs> I know you really well. Um, our audience may not. So yeah, just give a just give your elevator pitch right now of who you are oh, and what kind of motivates you. Oh, God. Yeah, you worked on this. <laughs> I hate talking about myself. Um, yeah, so uh, I have a PhD in biophysics from the University of Chicago, which was pretty interesting. I studied protein folding and thermodynamic bullshit. Um, so if you ever need me to calculate a log of a number, you know, or natural log, I might be able to do it in my head. Um, <laughs> Cause you know, like all bio, all of like thermodynamics is like log something, you know, <laughs> it's always in the equation, like log this, log that. Anyway, um, I worked at NASA for a, a couple of years um, doing genetic engineering. Actually, I just did whatever I wanted that was inside the scope of NASA because nobody cared. People were just like, do whatever you want. Um, so I worked on engineering microorganisms, mostly to break down plastic, um, but also sometimes to break down waste, like, you know, poop. And it was pretty funny because there's this guy across, across the hall um, who'd been at NASA for like 20 years. And uh, he invented like fake poop. <laughs> What? I've never heard about this. Well, I mean, if you're doing a bunch of experiments on poop, right? You got two options. Either collect a bunch of poop from people, right? So you just have to like, every time somebody poops, you collect their <laughs> poop and you do a test on it. Or you create like a poop simulant, right? <laughs> all right. Something that has all the characteristics of poop, but isn't actually human poop. So you can make as much as you want on demand when you need it. <laughs> on-demand poop that is an idea for silicon valley next <laughs> and, uh, so he's he's the guy who invented uh you know poop simulant and uh he was pretty cool um but yeah i also worked on like you know um degrading all types of waste and uh it was pretty cool and interesting but you know it was just a place where ideas and people go to die literally you know there are all these stories about people dying at NASA, like on the base, like people just work until they're like death. Sounds like a shitty job. The okay. benefits were so good. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> but anyways, so the death thing, um, go ahead with the death thing. Yeah. So many people just died and you're just, there's this one guy, Joe, we called him Joe. His name was like Joseph something. And he was like 90 something years old. And uh, his lab door was locked and nobody like ever saw within his lab or anything. And the windows were like, you know, covered. And uh, he'd come in like three, three days a week or something. And you'd see him, he'd go to the cafeteria and eat and go back to his lab. And that's all you'd ever see him. And we're just like, oh man, like Joe, like one of these days we're going to find, find Joe dead. And like, sometimes he wouldn't come in for like a week or something. Everybody would freak out nobody could like get into his lab so we didn't know if like joe died in his lab or something like that oh my God. <laughs> you could probably just do a documentary on nasa alone <laughs> oh god they wouldn't let you <laughs> it's crazy um but yeah you know it is just not a place i wanted to spend my it's a place you want to retire at you know like when i'm 60 or 70 or something yeah. and uh just be like, take it easy at NASA and talk to people and just chill out. Don't do much work. Um, but right now it was like, I want to do something else. Um, I want to do science myself and do cool science. So I started the Odin, um, which was just at first me shipping supplies out of my apartment in Mountain View. Um, just like on weekends, I just like somebody would make an order and I'd write what it was in like a tube and then just ship it to them. Um, 
I probably sold like three thousand dollars the first year, uh, which is hilarious. Maybe like six thousand dollars the second year. Um, but yeah, I just uh, kept doing it, and eventually, I, I it, the Odin grew to be a company. You know, you work there with um, employees and stuff like that. Yeah, we're moving to Austin now, um, which is pretty exciting. I moved to Austin. Um, get out of the Bay area. So, uh, the Odin Oakland, you should stop by there. By the yeah, way, I think I, I think I should pay my homage it's not to longer it. for this world. You know, <laughs> I know I'm so sad. Well, you know, you're moving to Austin, but you're always going to be a Bay area company. So <laughs> can't take that out of that. You know, <laughs> David Ishii's moving to Austin. Also, he's going to help me run the Odin. Yeah. I know that's, crazy. that's crazy balls. So is uh, is the Odin going to be more focused towards um, this boot camp model that? Yeah, we want to start a school, you know. Um, yeah, we want to start a school and try to help people get jobs in biotech, which uh, who knows. But I think the benefit of our boot camp model will be we're not going to charge people $50,000 or some bullshit, you know? I think that's a big problem is that like a lot of these coding boot camps are like ridic cost ridiculous amounts. Um, and uh, it's, yeah, some of them make money, but I, I think it, it puts a, a lot of pressure on the person who takes the boot camp to like, you know, for the, for their life. It's just like any sort of loan for school or anything like that. And like the yeah. whole point would be to like make it different than school, right? Make it so that, it costs $5,000 or something, right? And uh, yeah, you know, we're figuring out everything, how it's going to be, but hopefully um, right now I'm, I'm, I should be closing on this huge space in Austin that's like 3,700 square feet. Whew. Yeah. Um, so like, you know, it'll be really cool. Sweet. Yeah. I'm looking forward to visiting you in Austin too. That'd, that'd be really fun. Yeah. And it's like, if anybody is interested in the school, contact me. Um, I, I imagine the first class or two we do will be like super cheap. <laughs> so then we can mess up a lot. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. You didn't That's pay why that you much, didn't have but to pay it's Yeah, exactly. <laughs> 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 disclaimer always <laughs> but we always you know give the basics and um people aren't too oh, mad yeah, at us no, it'll always be great. so it's fine totally right like <laughs> oh i remember when we did our first classes for o for odin online you remember that like yeah oh my god that was just a mess people still message me they're like esther your video cuts out and i'm like i don't oh. know just find it it's somewhere it's somewhere just, oh, just like look sorry like, Sorry, it's it's important like though. I'm like, no, every ago. I know everything has been everything is on paper. It's there's so many resources that you could find. They're just like, no, I have to watch. Yeah, I think that's the secret to like you know biohacking science and just life in general is do something and then fail, and then you learn from your mistakes and then you do it again and then you fail and you learn from your mistakes and eventually you have something good. You know, like with the Odin. If you look at how we've iterated, even in just shipping out the stuff, you know, like we freeze dry organisms now. Um, and we went from like, oh, God, oh, shipping out on plates to doing stabs to now doing freeze drying. Um, it's just because you try something, it doesn't work or it's not as good as something else. And you try again and you try again, you try again. I think that's one of the big things is that a lot of people, they're so afraid to start something because they think they're going to fail like some project. And uh, it's like, most likely you will fail. Like everybody's going to fail the first time, especially if you have no idea, you know, it's like imagining you're going to like pick up a guitar and like play it amazing the first time. No, you're going to sound like shit. You know, same thing with science and biohacking is like, you're not going to be good in the beginning, just like anything else. But if you do it, you know, you're going to learn and then it's, it's going to be really fun and cool and you're going to get shit done. Yeah, I agree. I think the hardest part is starting. And then the yeah. second hardest part is keeping, keep on going. Right. Yeah, yeah. for sure. Yeah. So yeah, along just, the lines uh, of that, you know, I want to just address the elephant in the room of 
picking yourself and getting started again. So what can you tell us a little bit more about the recent chain of events of getting to platformed? Yeah, you know, that's really tough. Um, you, yeah, I mean, you're always the one thing I've realized is that it doesn't matter what what goes on with your company, what you do, or, you know, your research projects or anything like that, you're going to face pretty tough challenges. Um, it's never easy. You know, I'm always like, God damn it. Why can't it just be easy for once? <laughs> but what I've realized is that, is that it's never easy. Life is never easy. These things are never easy, especially if you're trying to do something or do something different. Like it's going to be hard. Like that's the reason that other people don't do it or that like other people haven't done it is because it is hard. And, um, you know, lately a lot of companies have been, you know, banning us or, uh, you know, deplatforming us. And it, it's crazy, especially with our payment processors, you know, it started with PayPal. Well, it kind of started with Amazon a little, if you call them payment processor, they are a little bit, um, and then PayPal, and then Square. The thing is, is like, you know, we, like I don't, I don't have no idea. Square just sent us an email like last week, and they were just, we are not gonna process any more payments for you. And I was like, wh what? Why? Like, what even happened? You know, we've had a, a bunch of money come through your company, and like you've made money off. Like, what is the issue here? Because nothing we sell is illegal, right? We, we don't sell anything that is like for human use. We don't sell anything that's illegal in any state in the United States or most of the world, except for maybe Germany. Um, and so it's crazy that, uh, you know, people are cutting our payment. So we're on like, you know, our third payment processor in three months. And um, <laughs> yeah, and, and people who say like, oh, use crypto and stuff like that. Like we accept crypto but nobody uses it. So like, what do you want me to do? <laughs> I know, right? I don't know. Like, sure, it's great. And like, if you want to buy something in crypto, we have an option on our website. And, um, but yeah, nobody uses it. So we're stuck with payment processors. Um, but yeah, also, you know, YouTube banned me, which was really sad. Um, and I know this kind of had a ripple effect through the biohacking community where other people um you know aren't willing to post videos or are taking down videos and yeah stuff that like was really that. shocking for us i know there was a big push to archive all the all of your material and all other biohackers yeah. material so yeah right now so well, one thing i would say is that there's a website called odyssey that's o-d-y-s-e-e -E. um they're kind of like the decentralized youtube uh and they don't um Unless it's like hate speech or something like that, they don't remove any videos. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's it's nice. Um, it's not like the platform is obviously still making its way up to being a, a big player, but like all my videos are on Odyssey. Um, I plan to do my live streams for the in the future for for Odyssey and everything like that, um, which is like it's good. And that leads me to, you know, the, uh, this TV show I'm trying to make, like one of the big things was YouTube deplatformed me and, you know, we were live streaming. I was live streaming like twice, three times a week. And um, yeah, it was getting pretty popular and good and had a lot of videos. And then uh, they canceled my account. And I was like, what do I do? You know, all these other companies and documentaries and tv shows they could post videos of me online but i can't even post videos of myself online like that doesn't make any sense right that makes no sense <laughs> and so i'm like all right like i'm going to just do something myself i'll just make my own documentary then and um you know screw everybody else like and i think that was the spark i mean you've had this idea brewing in your head for so long this is this has been a dream of yours i remember speaking about it with you yeah. so many years ago. So I'm really yeah, glad I'm really that you're, happy. you're doing it now. That's really great. Yeah. Cause like, you know, it's just like so many people have made so much money off of me and other biohackers, right? Every, every biohacker who's had, you know, a viral moment or anything like that. I mean, goddamn, that Showtime movie is all about Aaron Trawick. 
may he rest in peace. And like the the dude is dead and like he doesn't get anything. Like they just completely capitalized on him. Not to say they exploited him or anything, but like they capitalized on him. And like people made money off of that. And it wasn't biohackers, right? Right. One thing I'm really big on is like people that I want to work with and shoot in the show, like I want to pay them. I think that's an important part of, um, you know, doing documentary work is like these people are doing work. You spend eight hours a day filming like that's work. You filmed before, you know, yeah. when you were at the Odin, like it's not easy. Like you have to be on, right. You have to be like, yeah, I'm answering the questions. I'm excited. Like it takes a lot out of you. And uh, you know, I want to change that. I want people to be paid for, you know, pairing on film, be, be part of the, the whole thing and not just like be exploited. Right. Yeah. I think biohackers, uh, some of us just kind of cling on to this fame for some reason yeah. they say, Oh, if I do this really niche hobby, then I can get on camera like Josiah and only a couple of people in this space that are, that are really on camera, which is really frustrating at the point at the moment worth like, so many people in the space, right? I think, I think the problem is, is like people want this fame, but like all it's gotten me is deplatformed, you know? <laughs> <laughs> like I'm not, I'm not all, this, all super wealthy. I've made like zero money off of filming and like invested thousands of hours. And I don't think people understand that. I even had this guy who um, messaged me on LinkedIn the other day and he was like, I want to pitch to this TV show, you know, to these networks they're they, they want me to pitch them some tv shows because this other thing i made um i want to do a biohacking tv show and i think it'll be great and i want you to be involved and it'll be great you know like publicity for you and all this stuff and i'm like yo i, I don't work for publicity anymore like i've worked for publicity and i get it if you're just starting out and nobody knows who you are yeah like, do media talk to journalists and stuff like that but the point i'm at in my life and you know, I, how I see other people being exploited. It's just like, nah, man, we got to help people make something out of this and also show them in, in like a real way, not, not exploit them. Yeah. I think you've pretty much saturated uh, your fame in terms of being on Netflix, you know, mostly be, Netflix. be mostly uh, being on Bloomberg, you know, being featured on Bloomberg. Um, yeah. Oh yeah. Like you know? there, there's tons of outlets that you've uh, definitely made a impact and, and why not make shit on your own? Right. Or yeah, because others it's just like it's everybody else is making, and I don't think people understand that as like everybody else is making money off of you. They're making money off you because you're interesting as a biohacker because you do projects or whatever. You're just an interesting person. And like in the beginning, it's, it's the excitement of like, being famous or being on these things that you, that people get drawn to. But, you know, after a while, it's like, you're doing all this work for free and somebody's making money off of you, like a good amount of money. And like, how, how exhausting is that? it to come up with something new every single year? It seems like you have this trend of, <laughs> you have this really cool next big thing and you're sharing it with everybody. And then the cycle goes on to where, people interview you and then you get this fame and then you ride this fame out until you find a new project. Well, I'm always working. The, the key is, is like, I'm always working on a bunch of different projects, mm -hmm. but they're at like different points in there. You know, sometimes the timing just isn't right on a project. Right. Um, other times I might not have the money to do it, or I might not know the correct people or something like that. Um, like this TV show, Oh gosh, you know, I've been pitching people for a while on it. I even had a pitch deck made and, you know, was pitching people. And I have a lot of friends who are filmmakers. Like most of my friends are either journalists or filmmakers because those are the people I talk to the most, <laughs> <right>? <laughs> um, which is terrible, but it's true. Um, and like nobody was really interested in all this stuff. And so I had to, um, you know, keep trying to find people, develop the idea. And I found a great team of filmmakers, you know, um, who are just willing to work on this project with me. All right. And name drop for us. Name drop for us. Who all the people working on your team? Yeah. So um, we have Hamilton Morris, who's going to help produce it. Right. And he is, um, 
he's produced Hamilton's Pharmacopoeia. I'm sure people have, have seen it on Vice, um, which is an awesome, uh, you know, documentary style TV show. Uh, we have Jamie Hercom, who uh, she produ helped produce that Showtime documentary, um, which is awesome and, and worked on a bunch of other stuff. Um, we have Galen and Cody, who I worked with on a documentary. Um, they're both, you know, Cody's an amazing uh, camera guy, uh, filmmaker, DP. They call him direct a director of photography mm -hmm. in filmmaking, a DP, which like doesn't really make much sense, but you know. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, and Galen, he does sound and he's, you know, am amazing sound mixer, sound guy, sound artist, and can also do other film stuff. Um, Katia, I don't know if people, you know, follow me on social media, but if you've seen all these cool images and stuff I've been posting, we have this amazing designer who's a, uh, been creating unique designs for the show um yeah so it really all just kind of like came together and the timing was right and everything and um i'm going with it but yeah it's uh i think that's what it is it's like have ideas that you're working on and uh you know just start pushing them forward little by little and eventually it's like you remember when you're a kid and you go to like chuck e cheese or something and they had that thing where you like put in a quarter and there was this like thing that would push and like, if your quarter landed in the right place, it would create a chain reaction and push a bunch of quarters off the edge. Oh yeah, I remember that. I would always try and shake the fucking thing because I'm like, oh, I need it to drop something. I've already I've never seen so any quarters. quarters actually fall off of that. I think they're all glued yeah. on. I think so. I think it's a joke. <laughs> and I'm also really old. So if you don't get that reference, I understand. <laughs> um, but that's the way it is. It's like, if you just push stuff forward a little bit, at a time, you know, you just working on projects. Like I have a bunch of, you know, spreadsheets that have like the different projects I'm working on and what's the next step in that project to get it going forward. And, um, eventually it just hits it, 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 it hits that, uh, that point where it has enough activation energy, where it just goes, it's just set in motion. It's just like, boom, you know, um, it's going with you or without you. So just hop on and it's going to be a crazy ride. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Um, you must have pitched your first pilot episodes. Can you kind of tell us the concept of it or well, the first give, us pilot? A little, give us a little teaser of what we were going well, to the see? The pilot episode is totally going to just be about biohackers. So um, yeah, um, I'm just going to go around and film with some biohackers. And really I want... I think a lot of people look at biohackers as like, even me as like these crazy stunt people and like all this stuff. And not to say we all, like some of us aren't crazy and we don't do stunts and stuff, but like, I don't think people see the actual, like who we are as people, the human side, like the scientist side, like all these different sides that are never shown by the media, right? Um, just a small the small window people see and that window is so shitty it's just like this guy injected himself it's like what about everything around that like why what was the purpose you know what was the aftermath how did that make him feel how does that make other people you know i i really want to get into um the nitty-gritty create nice portraits of people like that show them as real humans um and biohackers right so yeah i definitely um you know, Daria uh, Dan Seva, um, she's one of my favorite biohackers right now. Um, uh, and she's in the Ukraine. And um, yeah. Yeah, we I, interviewed her a little bit earlier uh, last month, I believe. And uh, she's got a lot of, she's got a lot of pizzazz. And I'm really excited for what she could do for her country and, and you know, yeah, local Ukraine, area. It's, it's amazing. Um, yeah. And I would just love, love, love to film with her. Um, we also like the second episode I want to do, I want it to be on um, like food and like chefs and farmers. I, I just know some really amazing chefs and farmers and other people who are doing really cool, you know, fermentation, chemistry, a lot of interesting things in the food world that most people don't view as like science but it's like 
a real, real, real science. And right. um, it's cool because you actually get to like experience it through taste and stuff, <laughs> um, which is really fun. Yeah, yeah, I think for the past five years, people have portrayed biohackers as sticking needles and shit. And I'm pretty mm. sure a couple of filmmakers have come over and said, hey, do you mind just like injecting yourself with something oh, on God. camera? And no we're way. like, um, no, that's not what we do here. We actually yeah. do sound science and genetic engineering at this establishment. But if you want to go see someone totally. stick a needle, like. <laughs> I want to show people that. And that's the thing is that like, uh, people don't get uh, to ever see the science or just the thought that goes behind a lot of this stuff because that's not as exciting as showing somebody injecting something. Um, right. But like, I think you can create something that's beautiful that doesn't necessarily have all these like, wow things. Right. Like, Oh my gosh, this person's injecting. Maybe it will have something. I have no idea, but like, I think the search for that has turned biohacking into like a, um, a freak show. It's a yeah, freak show it's, at it's this exploitative. point. Exploitative. Yeah. I don't think it's a freak show, but yeah, it's definitely <laughs> exploitative, right? Where it's just like anybody who's willing to do something that's kind of crazy on camera, somebody's going to want to film it. Um, and it's just like, eh, you know? Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Um, so what's, so you just started your Kickstarter. Um, yeah, I just started the crowdfunding. Yeah, Biohack tell me a bit more about that. Biohackplanet.com. Check it out. We got some amazing stuff, perks on there. Um, we, we, the cool, the thing I'm, I'm most excited about is uh, we, we have a bunch of original art um, that we had commissioned for this project for, of like biohackers and scientists and stuff. Um, and uh, it's... Yeah, it's, it's just super cool, I think. Yeah, I, I it's really like bioprints. Uh, you can get a like a personalized portrait done. Oh, um, there's so many cool things. But yeah, no, there's this artist I I love. Um, her name is, well, she goes by Polka. Um, she's a, a French artist or, or lives in France. And um, she does these surrealistic characters and sceneries and stuff. Um, and it... Yeah, she's one of my favorite artists and we commissioned a couple pieces from her original art, which is her art's going to be worth a lot of money someday. So it's like, <laughs> check it out. Like her art is super good. She's, I, she's so undiscovered. Like I've bought a couple of her pieces myself um, that I own. Um, yeah, she's just such a good artist. Um, we also had um, Haisu Jung, who's my tattoo artist um create us a really cool uh custom anime biohacker logo for t-shirts and uh, stickers and stuff and uh the g kong chan i think you had him on did you have him on yeah yet? a couple episodes ago yeah um he translated biohack the planet into japanese for us which was super cool oh that's super cool <laughs> yeah um because it's more complicated than you think right <laughs> so because biohack the planet is like a very um it's like a metaphor right it doesn't actually mean it, that you're biohacking the planet right so it's yeah. like it's a weird metaphor but yeah it's cool that he uh did that for us um you're really yeah. missing out on the big hitter right now which is an nft so you should do like some kind of interpretive arts NFT oh, and should. then try and sell it and auction it. I think that's a big money maker for, for your documentary. <laughs> a picture of Josiah injecting himself. <laughs> just, just a picture. There's no actual <laughs> follow through in that. All right, cool. Um, so my last question is to you. So, you know, everybody check out that Kickstarter. Uh, it's going to be really awesome. Once we fully crowdfund it, we're going to see some really great oh, action gosh, from the you. Show, like, you know, I think we've already raised, it, I just posted it today, actually, and we've already raised like $16,000. So the show's going to be made, you know, it, it, these things cost money also, right? So it's like, uh, you know, because you got to fly a, a film crew around the world and pay for people's hotels and food and stuff like that. Like that's expensive and rent camera equipment and, and things like that. So even if you're doing it on a budget, like we are, it still can be pretty expensive, but, uh, 
I've learned a lot from being in front of the camera, a ton, a ton, a ton, a ton. Um, so I, I think I have a very unique perspective um, and can really take advantage of that because most people, especially who do documentaries and stuff are never in front of the camera. They're, they've like right. never been in front of the camera. You know, sometimes with like uh, narrative fiction, um, you know, like normal movies that we see, you'll see an act or you know become a producer or director or something but not in documentaries um it's never really happened so it'll be um yeah i think i will have some really cool insights and be able to really create something good we're gonna create it now you know we got like sixteen thousand. i'm sure it'll go up in the next month um so it's gonna happen uh you know be part of it contribute it'd be much appreciated yeah and you know it's something very unique because like you said, uh, mostly producers are the ones taking the creative control of the content. Yeah. And in this case, you are the sole driver of the content. Uh, you're making, you're making everything. You're making up the storylines. Yeah. Well, I mean, I have everything. a good team also, but yeah, you know, like uh, Jamie and Hamilton have a ton of experience and um, they're going to be able to help help really a lot of things that I miss because I've never been behind the camera before. Mm -hmm. um, I'll, I'll be in front of the camera on this. You know, I, I want, I want it me to be like the host of the show. Um, kind of like Anthony Bourdain style, you know? Um, but uh, yeah, I think it's great because uh, we got a really great team that has a lot of experience and um, is going to make something really cool and unique. I think, I think, it's going to be, at least we're trying to do something that's really arty and fun and is different than anything anybody's ever seen. I'm pretty sure you always tell me, Esther, have some nuance to that. Like that has no nuance. Like make sure, make sure you revise and have some nuance to it. So I'm really looking <laughs> forward to the nuance. <laughs> yeah, no. Yeah, for sure. All right. Any last words of advice to people starting out in this biohacking? <laughs> that's what I always get. Like, do you have any books I could read or something like that? Do you have like any that? books? Do you have any podcasts? <laughs> Who do you follow? Mostly yeah. books. People ask me. And I think that people, what people don't understand about science, well, it's like everything, but science isn't like something you learn by reading a book. Um, and it's good. Like the Odin, you know, is a good example. A lot of the people who've come to work at the Odin and come through the Odin uh, didn't have much experience in like molecular biology and genetic engineering, right? Almost all the people who work there, Gabe, Pete, and Jill right now, like they didn't have any experience with this stuff, right? And um, now, you know, they're masters. They're teaching it. <laughs> and I think that's the thing is that like anybody could learn it, but it's a hands-on thing. It's not something that you like read a book about. You have to um, or even go to school about, you just have to do it, unfortunately. So you have to get your hands on something. And, you know, the Odin, our, our cheapest kit, I think is like, like 30 bucks or 30 something bucks. Like, you know, buy the kit, just get, get some experience, get your hands on it, dip your toes in, just start going forward little by little. You might not be able to afford, you know, one of the bigger kits, but like do something small. And we also offer payment plans, right? Um, so that if you can't afford one of the bigger kits, you can spread it out over time. But like, you, you got to do science if you want to do it. Like it's, you just have to do hands on. I remember when I was in undergrad and we were learning about, you know, it was a genetics class, fucking genetics class. Gosh, terrible. <laughs> and you know, learn about all this genetic stuff, but you have no reference for it. Right. You know, and they're talking about different types of DNA and chromosomal and all these different, and you just have no idea. It wasn't until graduate school um, when I actually started experimenting that I was like, oh, and I get it now. I finally get it. You know, like all this stuff I learned, I, it didn't make any sense. I mean, now that I'm working with it and experimenting, you know, I realized that like, oh, wow, chromosomal DNA is this and this is how you can extract it because of these reasons. And, you know, um, it made sense. So I, I tell people just, you know, hands on, go to whatever it takes, go to a biohacker space, go somewhere, um, just do something. Uh, but yeah, you got to 
got to work with your hands. That's how you'll learn biology. That's how you become a biohacker, is just working with your hands. Awesome. Great answer. All right. Thanks, Josiah. Glad to have you on. Uh, best of luck with your crowdfunding. And we really look forward to seeing that documentary come to fruition. Yeah. Yeah, it'll be great. Thanks for having me. Awesome. Take care. Bye. All right. Cool.